What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we are going to be doing episode 33 of Vacuum Saved. Reason being, the vacuums in front of you have been recently acquired and will be shown off in this video. So we have about 10 vacuums here, I don't know why I said about, I can count, this is exactly 10 vacuums. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I guess technically, if you really don't want to count the carpet cleaner, then you could argue nine vacuums but regardless we have 10 um, electronic suction appliances here and we'll gladly show them off in this video so we're going to go ahead and get started with everything that we have and the first machine that we're going to start out with showing off in this video is this machine which i believe is the one out of all these i got first because all these i got very recently so this machine is a Shark Apex powered lift away with dual clean and zero M technology self cleaning brush roll. It's a very long name. And this actually is a machine they still produce, that Shark actually still produces. And I do already own one of these, but the version that I own is the blue version that does not have zero M technology. It's just a basic dual clean. It's the first generation Apex. This is the second generation Apex. And I got this one at my local vacuum store because my local vacuum store had gotten a few sharks in and they were all about the same price. He had this one, he had a shark rotator, and it's like the first generation rotator that came out like a decade ago, only it's the Walmart version that's blue. He had another rotator that had like a slightly different design. It was like a bit, it was a bit larger, like a much larger dustbin, and it didn't have the handle that turned into a wand and it was set up more like an old style navigator where it had a hose that kind of wrapped around and it actually had like a Bissell style handle on it and that was the wand instead of being it being the actual handle he had that one he had the navigator swivel which obviously I just sold the exact one it was the same blue one and everything so uh, obviously no reason to get that and, um, and then he had this and I was basically shopping for a vacuum at the time, and I was planning on buying one of those sharks because I thought, hey, sharks, they do very well as far as YouTube, video, YouTube videos and all that, and I've been wanting to get some more sharks recently because I've been wanting to try some of the newer machines and see what sharks been up to because most of the sharks I've been getting have been, well, this style of old school standard liftaways. So something a bit more premium, a bit more powerful, a bit you know, more dense might be in the cards as far as trying it out. And this particular machine was just that. So you can see he actually had this listed for, about, again, about the same price as the other ones, $69.99. And I actually didn't pay that for it because he was having trouble getting some, like, really heavy boxes down that was, like, up on a shelf really far up towards the ceiling in his shop. And um, he asked me if I could help him with it because he's a bit of an older guy. He's about to retire. He's actually selling the shop now. And that's why one of these other machines that I got from the shop, you'll see. And you'll see some more too because he's given me a few machines from the back of the shop that he's going to throw away. And there's a couple in the front of the shop that if they're still there when I get paid, then I will get them. That includes a, I believe there's an Orc Elevate Command that he had there. There was a Carpet Pro that I've been wanting for a while, but it is a bit expensive. There was like a Compact Cirrus that I wanted, a Recar Super Light, and I think that's it. There was an Electro, a couple Electroluxes I found pretty interesting. But anyways, so, so I helped him with that, and he knocked 20 bucks off the price. So I got a few attachments with this and a belt for my Kenmore, and... Oh, I just realized I forgot to include the Kenmore in this video. Oops, okay, I guess that'll be the next one. So, I got a belt for my Kenmore, and I, he basically gave it all to me for 50 out the door. So, not bad. Shark Apex 0M for 50 bucks, plus a couple, uh, a couple attachments with it. He didn't have any Apex attachments, so I grabbed a set of attachments that are just for the normal nv352 so while they don't fit on the machine because the machine has these little notches here for its style attachments so they don't sit on there all the way and they fall off they do still fit on the end of this hose and they are still usable so if you still want attachments for this you can put the nv352 and the older shark attachments on here 
so that is an option. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. At first, I thought the machine didn't work, and that's because the hose was actually undone, because obviously the electronics go through this hose, so you have to make sure that's in all the way. Um, one thing I did that's very stupid that I do not recommend and you should never do with your vacuum is I vacuumed up drywall dust with this the other day. And you can see why the entire inside of the machine is caked in white. So the filters are obviously completely plugged with drywall dust now, so I will have to replace those. But when my next paycheck hits, hits not hicks, hits, I will be purchasing a new set of filters for this anyways because it was kind of in need of them. For how cheap he was selling this, he didn't really bother to do any work to it. Because uh, he kind of knew it was going to be a pain and a customer pretty much just gave it to him and bought a new machine So he just stuck it out and just didn't do any work on it. So all I did was wipe it down That's all it needed Obviously since it has a zero M technology and none of the combs were busted on it There was no hair around the brush roll. There were no clogs in the machine And the filters were decently clean So pretty much all he did was he just washed the filters and set the machine out and that was that so uh, the filters aren't in too, too good of a shape, but we will see is this thing off or on. Actually, I don't know. Okay, I believe it's off now. Oops. I just kicked this dirt devil. Do, 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 do. But yeah, so. We're going to see if this thing still has suction. I didn't empty it of all the drywall dust, but the... Filters are still a bit funky on it, so we'll actually check that out now real quick. Yeah, that's really bad. Definitely don't do this. Ooh, that smells not very good either. So, do not do that. But once I get the filters, I'm going to rip this machine apart and clean it up anyways. I'm going to check the post motor filter. Okay, good. There's no drywall dust in the post motor filter. And there's no drywall dust in the chamber. So, no drywall dust actually got through to the final post motor filter, which is good because it means the filters did their job and actually kept that stuff out of the motor, which means I'll be okay with this. I'm not going to have to worry about getting a new motor for this thing. But yeah, so that's that. Hopefully the thing still has some suction despite the filters being clogged up with dust. So uh, let's see. Well, that's very weak. <laughs> it's supposed to have way more suction than that. <laughs> now I'll have to fix that. You can see it runs okay. LED headlights. Apparently there's something stuck in there. Oh, it fixed it. Kind of. Normally you're not supposed to vacuum this fast, but I'm not actually trying to clean. I already vacuumed with the Dyson, so I'm not too worried about it. Even vacuuming haphazardly, this carpet will still be plenty clean. So yeah, I do need to pull the thing apart and clean up those filters. I might even do a video on how to wash the filters on these, since I don't really have to worry about ruining the filters by washing it, because I've already determined I'm going to replace it. Because my old school Apex, the last gen one I was just talking about, also needs a new set of filters. So I'm just going to buy on Amazon. I think they have like a two pack of filters, all three filters for it, for like 30 bucks. So that's like 30 bucks for six filters, um, including the HEPA filter, which the old Apex desperately needs because it's clogged with carbon dust. So I think I'm going to go that route. Other than that, this machine works perfectly. Normally the brush roll doesn't make that noise. I think something's just jammed in it. But, um, in fact, we might as well look right now. There might be a piece of drywall stuck in there. Uh, so this is definitely 
not a argument in fate. Oh, I see. Oh, that's a nail. Oh my god. And even dented it. Wow. There's some stuff stuck in front of the soft roller. Yeah, this whole thing is coated with this stuff. See, that's not good because on these machines you can't get to the actual bearings. So, if this brush roll seizes up, I'm kind of screwed. And Shark's not going to send me a new powerhead. They're going to make me. They're going to get me to try to pay a hundred dollars to have one shipped. Hundred dollars plus shipping, in fact. So yeah, I need to wash all this. But none of the teeth are broken on the Zero M. So that's good. So I will have to do a deep clean on this, which will be easier said than done, given the issues with these machines. But it work it still works. So I was just kind of curious to see, and I had so little money invested in this machine that I figured I'd try using it to clean up the drywall dust, because the drywall dust was in a closet with hardwood floors, and Duo Clean just works so well on floors and with dust. <laughs> But um, um, that attached to a non-serviceable bagless machine is not a good idea. So definitely learn from this mistake. I mean, I knew I was going to have some hell to pay for it. But more evidence not to suck up drywall dust or any fine dust in a bagless machine, at least to any abundance. So yeah, that's the Shark Apex Zero M. Moving on to the next machine. Next up is the next machine that I bought from my local vacuum store. Uh, again, the exact one that I just mentioned. Only this one I actually purchased yesterday. And this one is the Hoover Whisper Cyclonic. This one was actually at that store for quite a while and nobody bought it. And apparently right, right when I bought it, someone walked in. Like really when I was about to leave with it in my hand. Someone was like, oh, did you just buy that? I wanted it. And I'm like, well... Buy this, buy this other wind tunnel that he has. And he's like, oh, I don't want that. I don't want something with bags. And uh, that was a whole story. That guy was a real pain in the ass. But anyways, so uh, this machine is one that I didn't know existed for a while. And uh, didn't know existed until I saw it in the vacuum shop. Because I've never seen one of these in the wild. I don't know how long these were on the market. It doesn't seem like it would have been all that long. But uh, the concept intrigued me, basically like Hoover's version of a dual cyclonic vacuum cleaner with a, uh, you know, quick draw wand handle and a brush roll shut off. So it seemed like an intriguing enough machine to me. I love this turquoise blue color. It has both the attachments. It's in good shape. I thought I might as well pick it up. So this one, the tag is... Strangely enough, $89.99. I will admit, some of his prices are a bit funky. Um, <laughs> but um, this machine, I walked out I walked out with it for, I think it was $55. Yes, it was actually, now that I remember. Because he was having a 22% off sale um, since the store is closing in a sense. Like he's, he's basically in the middle of selling the shop now, so he's you know, trying to get offers from people and all that to buy the shop off them so we can retire and all that. So I got this for 55 bucks out the door. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that actually, that I don't think that actually is 22% off. I think he gave me an additional deal on top of that. But regardless, um, he wanted 55 for it, so I gave him that. And uh, I'm trying to remember if I got anything else with it. I don't think I did. I don't think I got any parts or anything with it, but I, I could be wrong about that. I'm kind of blanking on that at the moment. I believe I just got the machine. Yeah, I did. I just I just bought the vacuum. So, um, yeah. So, you can see a little, cute little crevice tool in there. Isn't that cute? That just pops right in there. If I can even get it back in. Oh, I see. There's a little slot that kind of fits in there. Just like that. There's a little brush. That looks very funky. And, uh, yeah. As usual, people are always going to want to know what the filters look like on these. I actually haven't even looked at the filters on this. Okay, so it looks like there's no filter in the Cyclone. Just a basic dual Cyclonic setup. And 
we've got this right here that just rotates okay this actually looks like a filter I could easily get a replacement for or is this not the right one no yeah this is huh actually this I don't this doesn't feel like the right filter like it fits in there fine but it's very loose it feels like it's not the right filter honestly is this the right filter because this looks like a filter that go to a T-series, but it is thinner, so it is its own filter. And it obviously fits in there, it's just a bit loose. I mean, it fits in there evenly, it's just a bit loose. I don't know. Regardless, that looks good. I don't, be I don't believe this is one that he rebuilt. I could be wrong about that. Regardless, it's no big deal to me. I could always rebuild it myself. I was really worried about it. This this one filter do I remember being finicky. That pops off. Got a kind of shark style filter. Got some carbon dust on it. Could do to be replaced. I looked at the shop. I didn't see any filters for this machine. Oh, got a little bit of debris in there. That could stand to be at least, you know, wiped off with a rag. No big deal. That's something I could always do. I mean, technically rebuilt doesn't mean clean, <laughs> so eh, nothing too bad there. So that pops in like that. Oh, there we go. That goes on just fine. Has a nice little. Or wait, is that a? I could have sworn this had a headlight. I guess it doesn't. Oh, does that even? Okay. Is that gonna? How does this? This is not wanting to go back in. Oh, I see. I gotta push it. There we go. That was a bit weird. So yeah, Whisper Cyclonic Filtration System. Over 20% quieter than all other leading cyclonic brands. See carton for details. Well, I can't really do that because I don't have the carton. High to low carpet. We got a five position adjustment. Because I see four. Oh, I see. So the notches are actually the empty spaces. So low, low, medium, medium, high, medium, high. So I guess we'll leave it on medium. We have brush roll on and suction blocked indicators. That's really nice. Got some scuffs on here. It looks like something I could probably clean off. It doesn't feel like they're too deep. There's a little bit of dust in it from when I cleaned the shop to test it out. I don't like the way that it kind of sits on the hose like that. Brush roll. Do have some scratches on here. This spins perfectly freely. No play in the housing. Got those down here. This is not in too bad of a shape. Just this hood's a bit scuffed up. There are some actual gouges on the corners here. And it is a bit dusty. This was one that well, has been at the shop for a while, and the shop's not very well ventilated, so I do expect some dust and dirt on the outsides of these machines. Here's the sticker. Hoover, 12 amps. Model U518-4900. And... Is there not a manufacturing date on this? Glen Willow, Ohio. Made in China. It, I'm looking all over on this. I'm not seeing any date information. Oh seven, oh eight. Does that mean two thousand seven or two thousand eight? I'm assuming not, but also possibly. I don't know. Maybe the Hoover collectors can correct me on this. Rick Hoover, got any idea what this means? Because I'd be interested to know. But yeah, so some flimsy plastic right here, a bit discolored, not too bad. So, oh, hi, Rika. Hi. She was underneath the chair for some reason. Anyways, so that's enough time wasted. We're going to go ahead and try this out. Oh. 
That's really hard to turn. There we go. The more and more I use this thing, given its, uh, you know, dual cyclonic design and the uh, metal wand with the relatively weak suction, it's reminding me a lot more of a Phantom. But uh, I'll be honest, I like this. This uh, first impressions on this machine are pretty solid. It's not too loud. I love the soft start motor. That's something that I'm not used to seeing from Hoover. It's still not that quiet. They, you know, they go through all this effort. It reminds me a lot of the Bissell Power Glide, um, the older style from like you know 01 to 05, not the ones that they make now. The bag Power Glides, like the 3545, where it says you know oh quiet performance, and you're like, this is not quiet. It's not loud, but it's not quiet. Why'd you call this quiet? This isn't. This is not quiet. So, but it, I guess it doesn't. It says. 20% quieter, so maybe it is 20% quieter. If you, I mean, I could see if they're comparing it to like a Dirt Devil, then yeah, I, I, I could see that. So, granted, I'm sure this was much more expensive back in the day than a Dirt Devil, even the highest end Dirt Devil at the time, which would have been probably, probably the Reaction would probably have been on the market when this was the D2 Reaction. That's probably what they were comparing it to. So I guess in that sense, I would rather have this than a reaction. I haven't even had a reaction. I will be getting one soon, but um, I'm sure I like this more than it. And uh, yeah, so I kind of like this. The high adjustment is really hard to turn, but as I wiggled with it more, it felt like it was easier to turn. Maybe I need to just lubricate that dial. Um, it could have dried out after sitting for a bit. Or even just twisting it more and more will kind of loosen it up. But yeah, that's the Hoover Whisper. Cyclonic, pretty interesting machine. Definitely one I'm going to be adding to the collection and not getting rid of, so definitely not going to be selling it. I do really like this machine, and I will be holding on to it. So yeah, that's the Whisper. On to the next one. Next we have a machine that, well, isn't exactly in the condition it was when I got it, and it's one that's not very interesting. So I'm mostly going to gloss over this and more so focus on the story behind getting this. So my fiancé was driving to work, and he saw this on the side of the road because it's white, so it sticks out even in the nighttime, and it's easy to see, and he grabbed it for me. So that's that's it. Uh, he wanted to be nice, grabbed a vacuum for me since he saw one, and knew that I wanted pretty much anybody to grab whatever vacuum they can and bring it to me in case it happens to be a good one. This was not a good one, not even close. He brought it in the house, plugged it in, turned it on, and it blew a bunch of dust in his, fa in his face. Um... 
And then I watched him try to unclog it and kept fiddling with it as the machine kept blowing more dust in his face. Even though it was poisoning our air quality and making the entire office coated in a layer of dust, the amount of physical enjoyment in the form of laughter greatly made up for that deficit. And uh, watching him fiddle with the thing trying to get it working uh, was definitely very, very, very much worth it. Even if this machine is generally a pain in the neck to work on and not one I enjoy. So, this was thrown out. It was on a curb. Why did they throw it out? Well, <laughs> there's one reason why it was thrown out in particular. Uh, two reasons. The mo one thing is that there was something caught in the brush roll. That's that's basic. The, only, the other reason it was tossed out is... Uh, something missing so as you can tell I've already cleaned this out and refurbished it this thing's completely clean on the inside there's nothing nothing in it I get some dust on the inside of the bin somehow but it's otherwise clean and uh, clean completely stripped the thing apart down to the motor because obviously since there was no filter there was dust that was actively sucked into the motor so I had to clear it out thankfully they, the previous owners threw this out right when that happened, so there wasn't any long-term bearing damage to the motor. Once I vacuumed out the motor, vacuumed out the uh, motor housing, sprayed it down with some Zep, disinfected the whole thing, washed it all out, and quick-dried it, it was good to go. And the only thing that was left, because the post-motor filter is still in here, but it was clean, there's really nothing on it. Um, well, I should say it was dirty because of all the dirt that went through the motor, but as far as actual carbon dust... It was fine. So the only thing that was left was to grab a new filter. That's exactly what I did. I just grabbed a random filter on Amazon. Ended up costing me fifteen dollars. Definitely not worth putting any money into this machine. But the belt was good. The brush roll was good. There's no issues with that. The only thing it needed, I guess, it's missing the attachment, like it always is. I've never got one of these with that attachment. It's always missing. But whatever. It has the uh, filter now. So 15 bucks down the drain, I got a new filter I can pop in this thing. Hopefully that little coupon it comes with can help, given the fact the last thing I bought from Crucial, Crucial Vacuum actually almost cost me a sale, and that was very frustrating whenever I bought a shark handle for $40 and the thing was busted. Um, and, it only, and it waited to break until right when I put it on a customer's vacuum, so not very ideal. But yeah, so new filter, going to pop that in there at some point. Um, for now, I don't feel like doing that. But I will turn it on just to show you that it's working. Oh, the other thing is it's missing the switch cover for some reason. But yeah, as you can see, it works. And that, as usual, the pedal release on this doesn't do very good. But yeah, all this is clean. Cleaned all this up. There's some rust on the bottom of this. Not too worried about that. I cleaned up the brush roll, cleaned up the belt. Uh, I didn't actually replace the belt because it seemed like it was fine still holds good torque on the brush not slipping or anything so if it ain't broke don't fix it and yeah so that's that hose is good no splits cords good nothing wrong with that there there is a weird issue with the like the spine of this thing where it was like cracked in a couple places but it still holds on obviously it's probably gonna let some dust through but this thing is a dust spewer anyways oh the other reason why they threw it out is that this wheel was was broken off and jammed into this corner so it was like off at like a 45 degree angle and jammed like this so they threw it out i just grabbed it yanked it out and then popped it right back on these wheels love to pop off for some reason because this thing is built like trash i hate this machine i've gotten so many of these in and these are horrible i do not recommend these black and decker air swivels these machines are trash there's no parts available for these the only reason you can get belts is because they're repurposed as a bissel belt and um, filters are easy to find, but they're expensive. And you know, considering the quality of this machine, and yeah, I just don't recommend these by any stretch of the imagination. If you're looking, if you're watching this video because you're wanting to get one of these, please don't get something else. If you really want a machine like this, of this style, just spend the extra couple bucks and get a shark. You'll actually have a better time with that. I know that's hard to believe for some people, but you will. Otherwise, if you were dead set on something bagless, that's not that's around the price range of this, and I mean the actual price range, the sixty dollar price range, not when these sell for like one fifty something. They are not worth that. When they're at, when you actually look at these around sixty to eighty bucks, 
get a Bissell instead. Save a couple bucks and get a Hoover. Just please get something else. This thing is horrible. I can't stand this. I have not tried the Eureka Max Swivel, which is like their version of this. My local Walmart has them for 60 bucks. I'll try it at some point. Maybe that's like, maybe if you really like this design, maybe that's a better alternative to this, but I don't know. I haven't tried one. But yeah, so that's that. Not much else to say about this thing. I have it listed for sale, and a whopping nine people looked at the listing in about 24 hours. So I may, I very well just may end up throwing this thing away, um, and just not, and just keeping this filter. I don't know, but yeah, that's the Black and Decker Earth Swivel. Um, so other than the filter, I put no money into it, and obviously there's there's no law saying I have to put this filter in here. So I'm not going to bother put this filter in until someone buys it, because I sure as hell am not going to use it. So that's that. And, uh, oh yeah, and the pedal release doesn't like to stay up. Sometimes it falls backwards. But yeah, so that's that. Moving on. Next, we're just going to blow past this machine real quick. This machine was a trash find. Just a standard Navigator Liftaway MV352. Literally nothing interesting about this machine. Nothing at all. Excuse me, MV351. Whatever, same thing. Uh, this was thrown out cord was chopped on it still is haven't got a cord for it yet i do plan um i'm trying to meet somebody who's in town who has one of these where the uh power head's missing and i tested the power head on this the power head is good uh, so the main motor don't know if that works obviously the cord was cut on it so maybe it works maybe it doesn't uh, when I got the vacuum, it smelled like dog, but it was full of dirt, which, in, you know, insinuates the idea that it was working and that some scrapper just got to the cord. And, because uh, the cord was cut, it wasn't ripped out. You can even see where they haphazardly cut it, and they actually cut through the rubber grommet in the process. So, I'm pretty sure if, if that sale, or if that purchase, for some reason, falls through, I'm sure I could just buy a cord for the same amount of money I was going to pay for that shark and slap it on this and get it up and running which i plan on doing if if all else fails because i can get one of those cords i can get, put like a 35 foot cord on this and have like 10 feet more cord than the original machine and at that point this thing would actually be kind of cool to have um i also plan oh hi rika i also plan on replacing this hose at some point because this droopy mess is just awful but there's no splits in it so i would have no problem selling this to someone otherwise it works could use some filters but i already cleaned up all of it i even replaced the hose that goes to the power head so it's fine but obviously i can't test it because there's no there's nothing there i didn't pull this power head apart because i don't have the proper torque security bit yet which obviously i'll also need if i go to replace the cord on this so um i need to get one of those and uh, once i do that i'll pull this thing apart and do a proper clean on the power head i've already washed the hose and the wand and all that and the bin the filters all that's ready and honestly this power head doesn't have any smells to it so i'm probably not even going to worry about it if i actually decide to use the thing that doesn't matter but um because honestly i i like these these basic shark liftaways they're nice little machines this one doesn't have all the creaking problems that the brand new blue one that i bought does for whatever reason so this is one I'd be more confident using, even though I don't like the color as much. It's just the basic purple. But it's alright. Swivelly wibbly. Look at that hose flapping in the wind. But yeah, so that's the Navigator Liftaway MB351 with no cord. Basic curb find from someone who just threw it away. Because they, I, I don't know why they threw it away. I guess they just... Didn't feel like cleaning it, just felt like throwing it away. Or maybe the motor actually is dead, and that's why the cord's cut, whatever. No big deal. The motor motor housings for these are super cheap, they're only like 30 bucks. Powerhead's like 70 bucks. It's kind of stupid, but whatever. I'm still not looking at that much money into getting this running. So even if I decide to sell it, I'll still make a little bit of money on it. It's probably worth the effort. Now the other shark. A much more interesting shark. Ten times more interesting. This is the Shark Infinity. So, this is, and it's not even really a shark infinity, it's, it's really just an infinity, but a later infinity where they just very quietly slap the shark logo on the bottom of the, uh, 
on the bottom of the base assembly. So this thing obviously is very dirty, needs cleaned. I already did kind of go through and clean the filters off a little bit because they were plugged up with stuff. Didn't do anything else. And uh, yeah, 24 Cyclones, Infinity and all that. This is one of my, this is my most recent acquisition. My fiance literally got it for me just today because um, we were going to like, at, he was going to like run some errands. We were then we we're going to go on like a date afterwards, go to Olive Garden, all that stuff, have some fun. And uh, since he had just got paid, my paycheck hasn't hit yet, hasn't hit yet. So, you know, we we're going to do that. Uh, and then his car ends up needing a battery. The battery's 200 bucks, so we didn't have any money left. He had like maybe, you know, 20 bucks left and obviously he needs gas money. So, uh, he still wanted to get me something. So, you know, it's like an anniversary present. And obviously I can't get him anything yet because my paycheck hasn't hit. And I'm not very good at planning ahead when it comes to buying stuff. So I'll have to get him something of, uh, equal or greater value. So I'll, I'll have to get him something that's $5.99. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, so he grabbed this, and when he brought it in, I was kind of like, oh, shit, that's an infinity. Oh, sorry for the language, but yeah, I, it's an infinity. I haven't seen one of these in forever, and I've never actually seen one in person, so that's kind of cool. And um, yeah, the only issue with it that's pretty obvious is this, this cord hook is completely busted. Like, the actual plastic around it is flaking off. I don't know why it is, but this whole thing, and, and this is part of the housing too, it's not just the clip itself, it still swivels, but it's like, it's very loose and very sad, not very confident using that, the bottom one's okay, I don't notice any other broken plastic, but what I do notice is that, that moves way too loosely, that feels like there should be a bit more resistance in there, but there's not for whatever reason. Also, no attachments as per usual. I don't know what it is with shark owners and constantly losing their attachments. I don't even know where the where the rating sticker is on this machine. Maybe it's on the bottom. I'm trying not to hurt the thing. Yeah, I don't even see a sticker anywhere on this. That's what the brush roll looks like. Brush roll looks pretty tore up. Still, still seems to kind of spin. Oh, that's where the belt is. These bristles are incredibly soft. I can't imagine this thing cleans all that well. But I mean, it's a shark. What do you expect? Or it's basically a shark. It's a Euro Pro machine. Um, it still feels like it's better built than my Euro Pro Phantoms, but it also has a much worse brush roll than the Euro Pro Phantom, so it seems like it cleans a lot worse. Like, you, you just can't find a balance with these damn things. But yeah, so, Shark Infinity is something I haven't found. Uh, I still want to find one that's Infinity branded, and I also want to find an Infinity Navigator. You know, the Navigator before they called it the Shark Navigator, when it was... It was like a, it was like a dark, like, lime green color love to find one of those oh and of course this little thing is busted and taped up so it doesn't really hold the hose all that well there's also this clip is broken as well and yeah power switch is down there telescoping wand that's kind of cool but look at this that's horrible horrible I say Right. 
Yeah, motor doesn't sound that great. Uh, for some reason, it, it's it's supposed to do a thing where when you put it upright, the brush isn't supposed to spin. Apparently, that mechanism just failed. This thing has a lot of suction, too. You can see all the fine dust in there. Uh, obviously, it's clogged at the base. And it was clogged so badly, I couldn't even pull the handle off. You saw how much I was fighting with the thing. The suction on this is so good that it would not allow me to remove the handle because it was just sucking down so hard on it. But yeah. And I'll be honest, this handle is much nicer than like a modern shark. Like that one, that handle's really weird. This handle feels nice. I don't even know what attachments would fit on this, actually. I don't even know. It's got a really weird fitting. But, um... Yeah, actually, would this fit a, a modern shark attachment? Nope, it's not the right size. Okay. But yeah, so, Infinity. Oh, that swivels, too. Oh, huh, interesting. So, Infinity Navigator. Or, Infinity uh, Shark. and Shark Infinity. Jesus Christ. Needs some work. Needs some bad work broken in some places but for six bucks and especially six bucks that i didn't even have to pay for can i complain i don't think i can as far as the deal goes obviously the machine being in the condition it's in is pretty disappointing but it still runs it still runs um i don't know for how much longer but it still runs so uh, that's pretty interesting and uh, obviously i need to get that clog out do a little service on it and even with the broken pieces at that point it'll at least be fully functional so, uh, yeah, it's on the right track. It's just needs a bit of help getting there. Obviously, it needs a good amount of TLC, but should be okay. Now, looking at this, the machines that are left are, well, these four are from Goodwill. You can see the stickers right on them. This one's from a Goodwill competitor. So, yeah, a lot of thrift store vacuums here, Goodwill vacuums. So, this one is pretty interesting. I'll grab this and bring it to the forefront. This is the H2O Turbo. Some weird canister vacuum that apparently has the option to use water. And it even came with a bag of accessories. Or not much accessories, more so just documentation. And then like a wet floor nozzle and some weird adapter. It even has some semblance of the owner's manual, oh, as tattered as it is. H2O Vac Turbo with Aqua Force technology, whatever that means. Um, water filtration system vacuum cleaner. And uh, yeah, my hand is cramping. Read instructions before using vacuum cleaner. Use only as described. Uh, I actually might read the instructions before this just to make sure that I'm not using this incorrectly. So I'll do that real quick. Alright, so the instructions say to put the water up to where it says water level. And it doesn't look like there was really any use of this machine. It looks pretty clean on the inside here. And then this little tank piece, a little filter on there, there's a little bit of dust on it, should be hopefully be okay. This just presumably pops right back on, slides right in there to seal up. And then where's the cover? The cover's right there. A bit dusty, but hopefully I can just wipe that off. There we go. So it has a blower. I don't know why you'd ever want to use that. But uh, it, it has it. Wand telescopes. Actually, I think I'll adjust that to right there. And we'll go ahead. You can get a little squeegee tool if you want to use it for wet stuff. Um. Not head or faucet, plug and hose. Okay, that seems pretty basic. 
Do not pull out power cord past the red tape mark. Okay, that seems self-explanatory. So, I'll do a separate video on this machine. This certainly looks very fascinating in of itself. You can go through these instructions. For now, I figured I'm just kind of documenting the process while I actually look at this machine. Okay, yeah, so I think I pretty much figured it out. So yeah, just stick the water in there. Come on, okay, yellow, that should be good enough. I don't know which is on, which is off. We're about to find out. If I can get the stupid thing lined up. If it even wants to go on the plug, which it doesn't seem to want to go on the plug. Don't touch the metal, just in case. <sighs> Plug feels bent a little bit. This is taking up a lot of my time. Okay, there we go. Now. Oh wow, it's quiet. That is really quiet. Okay, can I take... Okay, I don't want to break that clip. Let's see, can I take, take that off? That has very little suction. Yeah, that does not have a lot of suction. Which explains why this is a straight suction head. And it's not... There's no turbo brush. But it could have at least had a motorized head it's on the carpet mode which is exactly what we want a little dust bunny right there oh well, got it you can't really push it like that because it it just pushes itself into the carpet, even on the carpet setting. You have to kind of tilt it back a bit. But when you tilt it back a bit, when I'm kind of like bending down, then it works fine. So I think it might be better if I adjust this to a higher height. So I don't have to... There we go. So I don't have to bend down as much. Nice long hose. Let's see if I'm vacuuming this whole room, how well does it follow me? Oh, hose kinked a little bit. It's it is very heavy. It does not follow you very. You really have to pull to get it to follow you. I can hear it picking up some crumbs though. Some stuff in the edges. Obviously this is not gonna deep clean. It has very little suction. Doesn't feel like it has a lot of airflow. And there's no agit there's literally no agitation whatsoever. Flipping this over to bare floors. Yeah, that's a much better experience. Still, you can hear the bristles kind of digging into the floor. Yeah, this is not... Not doing much. Yeah, not doing it for me. 
and kind of push it out of my way. Oh, that little, that little whirr noise when I hit the button was not very good. It has a nice little parking bracket right there on the side though, so that's nice. So yeah, I mean, this thing is um, very fascinating. For 10 bucks, I'd say it's definitely worth it at a minimum for the fact that it came with everything. I'm so glad that I picked this over like a basic little mini Kenmore bagless thing, which I, at first I thought it was bagged, and I was going to get that instead, and then I actually opened it and realized, oh, it's bagless. They just gave it an opaque cover to make you think it's bagged. Which, like, so it has none of the advantages of bagless, and then none of the advantages of bagged. It just made no sense. So I'm glad I picked this thing, even if it is quirky and probably doesn't work all that well. The suction is very weak on this thing. So, I don't, I don't know if that's normal, if it needs, like, serviced. I love how quiet it is. I will say, I adore how quiet it is. And this is, this is, this is actually my first water filtration vacuum. So, I'll be interested in playing with this a little bit more, trying it out. Maybe even, do I dare make it, you know, my daily vacuum for a bit? That works good. But, um, yeah, so... Fascinating little creature, but you know, definitely worth the 10 bucks I paid for it. But otherwise, it just makes a fun little project sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, really, not much I can complain about as far as the machine itself. That's a different story, but you know, I mean, it has all the attachments, it had the manual with it, it has all the pieces. It doesn't look like it was used that much, if at all. Obviously, it sat in someone's garage and got pretty dusty, but who cares. So yeah, that's the H2O. Wait, is this thing called the Turbo? Why do they call this Turbo? If they called it Turbo, it should have at least came with a Turbo head. Which it obviously doesn't. And I doubt this thing would run any Turbo head. But I'll definitely do more videos on this. And see what actually it can run. But yeah, so that's the H2O vac. And we'll move on. Next, we got a carpet cleaner. This is the Vissel Power Force Power Brush. This one was $7.99. The only reason I even picked this up is because, well, $7.99. I was planning on getting one of these brand new, and I didn't see them anymore, but apparently they do still produce these, last I checked. And uh, even if they did just now discontinue them, that's pretty impressive because this, I believe, is the exact same machine as the quick steamer only 20 years later and in black instead of white but otherwise it feels like the same machine so uh, we've got a very weird setup I don't know why this tank back here is discolored but it is I don't have high hopes for this machine it is remanufactured and uh, see that button for the handle release. Pull that back. I mean, at least that works. Ugh. I'm. I wonder if someone actually bought this and used it as a vacuum cleaner. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Because why else would there be this much hair around the brush? That's crazy. But, um, yeah. So, I think someone looked at the Power Force name, was the price point, and thought, oh, that looks like a good vacuum. And then bought it and used it as a vacuum. <laughs> that's, that's my hypothesis. This whole thing is bone dry. Doesn't look like there ever was solution in this, and this little filter here is plugged. There, there's no way. There's, there's got to be some other explanation for this. It also leans a bit, but who knows? Maybe this thing works. Maybe it sounds like a siren, and I'll have to throw it away. Who knows? Oh my god. 
Okay. At first I thought it was going to start buzzing at me. Oh, there's a burning smell. There's a very bad burning smell. Yeah. That smells like it's burning. That's going to get unplugged. Pronto. And not only is it going to get unplugged, it's going to go outside. So it doesn't continue to off gas in my house. Thankfully I have a fan on, but that's that's horrible. That's going outside. All right, so that thing was pitiful. And uh, thankfully with the assistance of air circulation, that smell has now almost completely been eradicated from the house. And the actual machine is now sitting outside to think about what it's done in timeout. So, don't know what that machine's problem was. I'm assuming someone burnt it up using it as a vacuum cleaner or just running it for too long without water, which I guess would also just mean using it as a vacuum, as a dry vacuum. But yeah, spit out some little bits of wood chips, but that's no big deal because the next machine will certainly get it. So we got the Regina Electra Broom, the Rika Boss Light, and the Dirt Devil Breeze bagged. This was the most recent one I got, so this one will go first. So this one I did already do some work on because whenever I got it, I opened up the bag chamber and inside, which first off, I don't think this bag is going on properly. Well, I guess I, I pinched the bag on the uh, door. That's not good. I can never get these bags in here, right? But yeah, I, I have a Bissell Style 7 HEPA bag in here, which as you can tell does not fit perfectly. Uh, but it does fit perfectly on the collar. It's just, um, it's a bit too wide and a bit too short. It hangs off a bit there. And there is still a little, little bit of debris in there but I don't know where that would have came from I'm assuming that was just getting sucked around from the inside of the back chamber as a result of the machine being ran because when I got this the end this filter you cannot see this filter there was so much dust and stuff and the reason why is because the previous owners stuck a dirt devil type D bag in there and this takes type U so the bag was way too long and it did not fit securely on the collar so then we're using it the bag blew right off and they were sucking up carpet powder so i thankfully this filter was in place because the motor is fine didn't notice any issues with it haven't opened it up yet but i don't notice any problems so i'm not going to worry about it too much um, i will at some point open this up again clean off this filter since there is some debris on it but Ugh, I'm not going to worry about it for now. Bissell Style 7 HEPA works just fine. Helps this machine with its god-awful filtration. Unfortunately, with HEPA, this machine still is not going to filter well because there's no exhaust filter. Now, if, it, if there was an exhaust filter but it wasn't HEPA, that wouldn't be too bad because this HEPA filter does, this HEPA bag does all the heavy lifting. But there's not even a, an exhaust filter on this machine, to my knowledge, to catch motor carbons. So that's not very good. But we're going to jam this bag back in here, try to get it to actually stay like that, and put this bag door back on, which it doesn't like to, you can see, it doesn't like to sit flush. The normal way you're supposed to take off this bag door is you're supposed to, there's supposed to be like a little lever that you can pull. This does not have that. I don't know if the back door is bad and it needs a new door or what but this thing just slides up and that's the only way you can actually take it off which also means it slides up when you're using it and then obviously that undoes this seal and then you start leaking air and not being able to actually pick up as good at least that's the theory and once you push it down it's okay so has the hose has the extension wand doesn't have a dusting brush and doesn't even have a spot for a crevice tool. I don't know where the crevice tool would go on this model. There's no spot for it. And 
I've seen the Dirt Devil crevice tools that these come with. They would not fit inside the wand like, you know, on many other machines. I guess the crevice tool is short enough. You could probably just stick it right here and then stick the combo tool on top of it. But it'd probably get in the way of the cord hook. I don't know. That's really weird. You'd think it'd be like right here or right here. I mean, they could have put it right here. Little extension right here where it hangs off here. There, there's a lot of things they could have done. I also had to re, re put the handle back on because this was kind of like over this little black lip right here. And these bracket screws back here were not tightened all the way. So this whole thing was loose. Haven't done any work to the bottom of it. This is exactly how I got it. But the brush roll looks okay. Belt probably needs replaced. Doesn't seem to be slipping too much. Obviously needs the hair cleaned off it. Otherwise, seems like it was taken decently well care of. The bristles are kind of messed up, but not much you can do about that. Head's a bit finicky. Headlight, I believe, still works. But yeah, so that's that. Enough blabbering. This was $19.99. That was, that was not worth it. I did not want to pay that much for it. But the only reason I ended up buying it was because I got that Goodwill thing where, you know, uh, I had gone to Goodwill often enough and I was a rewards member or whatever they call it. And uh, so I got five bucks off the order. So after tax and everything, I probably spent like 16 bucks on this machine, which is, is not great. Uh, you can tell I'm tired, which is not great. I already have the bagless version of this, so I did not need this by any stretch of the imagination. But I figured, what the hell, I might as well pick it up. Because with the condition of the bag and all that, if I didn't pick it up, no one was going to buy it. Maybe one of the other, like, one or two people in my city who fix vacuums, but no real person who was going to actually use this was going to buy it. And it would just gotten thrown away. So I figured I'd rescue it and bring it home. These Breeze models, unfortunately, unlike my last carpet push very poorly on this carpet so I'm dreading this experience we're gonna go ahead and plug this in if I can find the plug where's the plug oh there it is okay I'm not gonna unwind the whole cord not necessary I can just kind of good enough all right so I'll plug this in Gotta get my energy back to keep people watching the video so that way they don't leave until I just tore up this poor extension cord. Just because I'm too lazy to actually get back there because the outlet's behind that. Dang, I know you're not supposed to plug 12 amp vacuums into cheap ass extension cords, but. Well, sue me, I don't care. Dang, I'm fucking pushing. That's enough of that. I can't even push this thing. When it's not running, I can push it okay. It's still hard to push. But when it's actually running and you got the brush, you know, forcing it, I have to like put it all the way down like this just to be able to push it forward. It's such a pain in the neck. But it works. I mean, all I gotta do is clean up the brush roll and this thing will be perfect you know give it a little wipe down you know with some polish and it's good doesn't have that many scratches on it good shape you know i don't have any extra attachments i can put on this thing hell i might even steal the wand probably use that on something else other than that i'll probably sell it i don't think i need this thing because i have the bagless one and because it has that weird little issue with the back door unless unless i can fix that issue by just getting a new bag door then, then I might keep it, but otherwise, if I can't fix that issue, I'm probably just going to get rid of it because that's not an issue on my bagless one. And, you know, yeah, bagged is better. I do, th I do like this more than the bagless one already in terms of actually using it because 
HEPA bag, so much better filtration. But, I don't know. It's still interesting. I figured, might as well pick it up. I'm still in the hunt for the newer version of this. Like the Breeze Cyclonic, but the bag version that has still has the headlight and has the bag check indicator and turbo brush and all that. I was going to buy that off a different... Uh, off of someone else and then by the time I remembered that I was supposed to buy it the listing was down so Missed out on that. I'll have to find another one. I actually saw it in stock on Dirt Devil's website But it was a website glitch. I added it to my cart and that showed my cart is empty So obviously it was sold out and discontinued a few years ago So Dirt Devil does not produce anything bag. So if you really want to bag Dirt Devil then maybe buy this off me I don't know but yeah, so Good machine. It was nice to clean up, but you know Still has its flaws as expected. But yeah, moving on. Next, we have a Regina Electric Broom. $7.99 as well. This one works, but it's got a crack in the housing, unfortunately. But uh, it's pretty sun faded, but otherwise, it does work. Yeah, I'm not very interested in these Reginas, so if someone wants this, let me know. I'll list it for sale. But yeah, so not much to say about that. It works. It's in better condition than the other one, but that's not saying a lot because this one still has a crack in it. Although it's just one crack going going through the part of the housing. So uh, I think it is the kind of thing where... If you had some glue or some silicone, something that you could use to patch that up and reinforce that, then you'd be golden because there's no actual parts missing. It's just that one crack. And uh, obviously I don't want to use it because that could potentially actually, you know, break it in half. So, you know, brittle aging plastic, what can you do about that? But yeah, I did a video on both, both my Regina's last, you know, the last video. So if you want more information on this, you can look there. But yeah, electric broom, that's pretty much it. And now finally, moving on to the Eureka Boss Light. So, this one I got for $7.99. I don't know why this one's just drawn on, whereas on the other, all the other ones, it's actually a, a printed st sticker. But yeah, same goodwill as the uh, Dirt Devil. So, nothing special there. It has this random wand attached to it. I tried to separate these two wands, and I couldn't. These are pretty fused together, because it looks like someone tried to put them together wrong. Don't know what this goes to. It has an R. Oh, is that Ricard, I'm assuming? I don't know. Just some random wands it came with. Didn't come with any actual attachments or even a hose. Although it did come with a manual, which is upstairs. And it did come with a nice, freshly dry rotted belt. But yeah, as expected, given the name, it is pretty light. Oh, there's an actual care handle. Yeah, very light, very nice, nimble machine. Definitely. A decent fan of these old school Eureka Bravos. I think, I mean, I like the Elites better. It's got a bag in it. Bag feels attached properly. No issues there. Obviously, could use a HEPA. Not in too bad shape. Got some scuffs on it. Nothing too major. Still has the port cover. I do have a hose for one of these that I got that my other Bravo, my Bravo 2 has. This one does have a weird little issue there. Don't know why that is. I'm looking at the sticker. Eureka Company, Bloomington, Illinois. 617 something something. I don't remember that off the top of my head. Serial number 0104, so April 2001. And uh, it definitely is properly abused like a you know, 20 year old machine ought to be. 
Yeah, that poor power button. I don't know what's up with that and all the squeaking. This thing badly needs a service, and I have ran this one already, so I can tell that it's not ideal. So, hopefully this last one won't be too disappointing. It's got a nice blue bristle brush roll in there. I don't know why this brush roll is blue bristles. It's very pretty, though. It looks exactly like the brush roll that comes in the modern bagged Bissell Power Force in terms of the bristle color. Obviously, that belt is going to be is gonna need change. There's some duct tape right here for some reason. Hide adjustment right there. Not much to report there. Obviously, that one belt that's on it is probably pretty dry routed, so it wouldn't be much of an upgrade over this belt. I'll have to get a fresh belt. I believe I have a belt for this uh, that'll fit it at least I don't have any that it's supposed to take I don't think does it say use genuine Eureka style U bags this doesn't say anything about belts it's a bit odd normally if they say what bag they take they'll say what belts they take too apparently not this one but yeah so oh here we go Model uses genuine Eureka style U bags and belts. Oh, so it's it's the same belt the Clean Air Eurekas use. They don't use a different belt like what Hoover and Bissell do. That's interesting. So I, in that case, I do have a belt for this. Just a pretty basic one too. So that's nice. And I don't know if I have Eureka style U bags. I'm sure a Hoover A or Bissell Y or actually probably not a Y because that would probably be too short. But I'm sure something like that will fit in there. And when I say fit, I don't just mean stick on the collar. I mean actually connect properly. But yeah. This very well could scare the crap out of me. We're about to find out. Okay, it didn't. Yep, that's enough. So, the thing buzzes pretty badly. Brush roll does turn, I know that. Like I said, I did already try this. So, brush roll turns. Uh, so, that belt will need to be put on, but the brush roll should be salvageable. It sounds to me like the fan is in bad shape. The whole thing buzzes like crazy, very loud. It also could be the bearings. Don't know. Obviously, this thing needs a service given the amount of squeakiness as well. But still, for eight bucks, for an old school Eureka, I can't complain too much. But yeah, so that's another episode of Vacuum Saved. This was Intelitech Studio signing up. I'll see you guys in the next video. What was your favorite vacuum that you enjoyed seeing in this lot of vacuums? And uh, yeah. See you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Peace.